So I know it's kind of a meme to rewrite every application in Rust, but today we're looking at something that actually does it for a practical reason. So today we're looking at an application called FD, which is a Rust rewrite of Find. Now, Find is okay, but it's not the most performant implementation of a finding algorithm, and as you'll notice, FD is considerably quicker. So the basic way this works is we can just do FD and then search for something like NVim, and that's gonna do basically a regex search. Now also it's case insensitive unless the search you have contains a capital. So if you do something like FD, uh, something like this, that won't actually return anything because there's nothing that's actually spelt like this. But if we had, say, a file in here that did have a capital in it, then with the original search, that actually would have worked. Now, as I said, unlike find, this does regex as the default option. So if you do something like, say, p dot star cast, that will return everything that starts with p, has any sort of letters in between, and then ends in cast. Now, as a general performance boost, it doesn't include any of your hidden files or hidden directories. It will respect ignore files, so if you have, say, a git ignore, anything in the git ignore won't be showed in the output, and also it does not follow symlink. So if you actually want to show the hidden files, that can be done with fd-h, and let's search for something like my config directory. Now, as we're going to see, there is a lot of things being returned by this, because as we can see, there is a lot of hidden directories. But if we actually get rid of that search now and just do it without the dash H, it's going to end very, very quickly. And likewise, if you do FD capital I, that will include anything in your ignore files. Now, I don't actually have a good example on hand, but trust me that that actually does work. Now, there is a shorthand way of doing this, but I don't actually like the shorthand. So if you do dash u, that is including things in the ignore files, and dash uu, that is going to be include the hidden files and also the ignored files. But I don't really see any benefit in actually doing that because doing this isn't really that many extra characters and is much, much more descriptive. Now, I've been mentioning .git ignore files just because they're the most common ignore files you'll come across, but there are other ones you will see. So if you just want to ignore the git ignores and none of the others, you can do dash dash no dash ignore dash VCS, and that will just skip over the git ignores. Now, as for changing the case sensitivity, that can be done with the dash I and the dash S option. So I is obviously going to be for insensitive and S is going to be for sensitive. So let's search for something like podcast. And I know that I have a directory called podcast spelt with a capital. So in this case, it will be included, but let's try the same thing again. But this time, let's do it with the dash S option. As we can see, that one isn't included anymore. And if for whatever reason, reason you don't need a regex but you'd much rather work with a file glob that can be done with fd-g now i'm not going to go into how file globs work in this video but a really common use case for them is just matching on file types so if we do fd-g and then search for my mp3 files that will just include those files whereas if we did the same thing as a regex that would be something a bit more like i think we need to escape this one here and then if we do dot star that should give us the same result and as we can see basically the same thing. So you can do everything that a glob can do with a regex, I'm pretty sure, but it doesn't work the other way around. And if you want to switch over to basic fixed string matching, that can be done with FD dash capital F. Now, this is basically if the term is in the thing you're searching for, it matches. It doesn't do anything fancy besides that. Basically, if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. And obviously, you can do this with a regex because this is basically what we did at the start. Now, this is just printing out the path, but if you want to have some extra information, similar to what you would have with something like ls-l, that can be done with fd-l, and you can say search for nvim. And we can see we have the permissions of the files, we have the owner, the group, the size of the file, the creation date, and obviously the path is still there. So if you need that extra information for whatever reason, that's how you get that. And moving on to some ways to do filtering besides just the term, you can do fd-max-results, which obviously is going to limit the number of results. So let's say we just want 10, and let's search for something like config. So that's going to stop after it's actually made those 10 matches. You can also limit by file size with the dash capital S option. So let's say we want things that are 
greater than a thousand K. So greater than a thousand kilobytes. And let's search for PNG. So that's just going to return images that are greater than a thousand kilobytes. Let's try that again. But let's try it at say 5,000. And as you can see, now the list is much shorter. So if you want to go see a full list of all the things you can search with that, I would recommend going to the man page and scrolling down quite a bit. So down to the size option right here. So this is going to go over the names for all of the units and how to actually use them. It's not super complex, so you'll wrap your head around it pretty quickly. And while the man page is open, we have the next option, which is dash T, which is matching on a specific type. So let's say we just want to output, say, directories. So if we do FD dash T and then pass in D, so D for directory, and just search for something like, say, I don't know, uh, P. So that's going to return every single directory we have that has P in its name, but it won't return a single file. So all of this is cool, but what about some practical use cases? Well, with FD, you can also pass in the dash X option and run a command on every single one of the results. So for example, we could do something like FD dash T and then say only limit it to files and dash X wc l so what this is going to do is search for every single file in this directory and then do a word count on that file and basically it does as you'd expect so even without giving it a query it does do a recursive search as you can see from these ones right here which are in a subdirectory from the directory that we're in right now now the one question you probably have is is this actually faster than find so let's do a bit of a benchmark now this is going to be the least professional benchmark you've ever seen but the difference is so great that you still will be able to see the difference so first up we're going to run just find and we're going to run it with a regex just because this is the default way that fd also works so this is going to do a regex search for every single one of my jpeg files and as you're going to see it's not horrendously slow. It's going relatively quickly and now it's done. So the problem with find is the regex in find isn't really that quick. So because we're just searching for JPEG files, let's do it with a file glob instead because the glob will be quicker. So let's try this command right here. And as you can see, it's going a bit quicker, but it's still taking quite a while. Now let's try the same thing out, but this time by using FD. So this is doing FD, including the hidden files and including the ignored files with the exact same search. Now we're including the hidden files and the ignored files because this is the default behavior that find has. So let's run this. And as you saw, it's already done. Now by default, FD doesn't include those hidden files or ignored files. And by doing that, it is even faster. So let's try this out right here. And it's already done. Now, even though I didn't show you the exact counts, Tell me that find is faster there. There is no way that you can justify that. Now, one thing to mention about FD is it's not a perfect re-implementation of find. Now, obviously they changed the default behavior, but they also actually didn't bother including some of the options. So for some things, you may still need to go back to find. But for like 80 or so percent of the use cases, what they say on the GitHub page, FD will actually work for those. And I haven't come across a use case for myself that... I couldn't have just used FD4 instead. So for me, I'm probably gonna be using this as my default find from now on, just because I want those speed improvements. This is actually noticeably quicker. It's not just rewritten in Rust for the sake of rewriting in Rust. It's actually a faster application. Now, when I went through the, I guess, options available for this, I didn't go through everything, especially when it gets into things like doing the filtering with things besides the file name. There is way more that you can look at there and I'd really recommend doing so if you wanna use this because this is even more powerful than I showed in this video. But doing so in this would have taken me upwards of half an hour, maybe even an hour to cover everything. So I think it's a better idea for you guys to go and explore the man page for yourself and work it out as you actually need those features. But I think I gave you a good rundown of the general stuff that this application can do. So if you need these find-like capabilities, but you don't need the extra features that find actually has, I would highly, highly recommend trying this out for yourself. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinion, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peter, Lee, Road, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, Subscribe Star, Libra Pay, all of that sort of stuff. 
I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, BitChute, if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.